days again with Richie, the Fonz, and the rest of the gang for a bright new afternoon lineup this fall on KSTP-TV, Channel 5. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's the Joe Salem Show with Minnesota Golden Gopher head coach Joe Salem and KSTP sportscaster Ed Cairo. The Joe Salem Show is brought to you by Midwest Federal, a good tree to come to for shelter, providing financial services to this area for 90 solid years. Now, here's Ed Cairo. Good morning. Welcome to the Joe Salem Show and uh, the aftermath of something I thought after watching practice all week wasn't going to happen. I, I expected Minnesota to beat Michigan. Didn't happen. Well, Ed, I felt that, uh, I think all week, we, I think our team felt that we could uh, beat Michigan. We felt that we had to play well, of course, and do a, do a good job on the field, but we felt it wasn't going to be an impossible task. Uh, we got into the ball game. I don't believe we ran the ball as well as, as we wanted to. We were able to move for some yardage, but probably the biggest determining point in the whole ball game was the fact that uh, our field position, time and time mm -hmm. again, and the... Uh, the closest we got the ball to their goal line at any, in 10 different possessions during the game was our own 21-yard line. And other than that, we were further back than that uh, throughout the whole day. But to be able to move the ball uh, 80 yards uh, time and time again and, and uh, be consistent, be able to get a score without a, without a lot of big plays is really tough. And, and that hurt us, uh, I think, a great deal offensively. Uh, defensively, we just had a very difficult time stopping Steve Smith, their quarterback who... Coming into the game had uh, been a very hot and cold, very mediocre quarterback. He was uh, completing, I think, 37% of his passes uh, mm -hmm. for his first seven games. Uh, Anthony Carter, to give you an example, had only caught like 19 passes in, in uh, seven games. He caught eight against us. But uh, uh, Steve Smith came in, he got a hot hand, and he was really on target. And, of course, Anthony Carter is a guy that uh, nobody can cover. I don't uh, care who you are or what you're trying to do it with. He, he'll get open, and if you get the ball there, he's going to... Uh, he's going to catch it. So between Carter and, and Smith and, and Woolfolk uh, running a few of them up the middle on us, uh, he got to be a game that uh, Michigan just beat us. There's nothing else you can say about it. Uh, when the score was over, I don't feel that uh, officiating or anything else yeah. was any cause of it. It was just a matter that uh, Minnesota lost. Uh, we were not able to stand up to the big plays when they made them, and uh, that was the difference in the ballgame. Well, Joe, let's uh, take a break right here and come back, and we'll look at yesterday's game in just a moment. tax break you've been waiting for is here. Hi, I'm Peter Graves for Midwest Federal, introducing the insured All Savers Certificate. Now you can really make money saving because your interest is exempt from federal income tax, up to $2,000 if you file jointly. And depending on your federal tax bracket, this means you can get a higher yield than from other investments. The All Savers Certificate, a one-time opportunity. Don't miss it at Midwest Federal. The New York clothing concept is very simple, a savings of 35 to 50 percent, 12 months of the year. Name brands such as Phoenix, Ole Cassini, Ratner, $150 savings on five shades of camel hair, $120 savings on ultra suede, and this beautiful Harris tweed sport coat with a savings of $70. And Hugh, what did you find here? A three-piece suit with a price tag on it of $98.88. Is that possible? Very simple, quality and savings at New York clothing. On Wednesday, November 4th, the Orbiter Columbia will take off again, marking the first time a manned spacecraft has ever been used twice. This is Jay Shadler, and the quest for space is something Minnesotans can be especially proud of, because without the help of certain Minnesota firms, the launch itself would be impossible. Thousands of Minnesota workers spent decades researching and planning for this historic moment. Channel 5 will bring you an in-depth look from Cape Canaveral, the second mission, the Minnesota Connection, starting Sunday at 10 on Eyewitness News. Hello, I'm Jim Peck. And I'm Pam Ward. On our next Twin Cities Today show, Broadway's favorite dolly, Carol Channing, will be live in our studio. Pam will be talking to nationally acclaimed playwright Edward Albee. Film expert Bob DeFlores will share some exclusive clips of Loretta Young and Jeanette McDonald. And Barbara Holmes will tell us the latest soap opera scoops. So plan to be with us at 9 a.m. right here on Channel 5. Joe, let's uh, take a look at the first half highlights of the Michigan game. And uh, 
Uh, I thought it, at the point that you stopped them uh, after this drive was a good indication that you were going to give up field goals in that touchdown. Well, it was. This was a uh, third and seven here. We had Smith, the cornerback, who was a pretty good rush. He got out for 10 yards and got a first down. Here's the second and 16. Again, you see uh, Steve Smith back to pass. Finds Carter on the outside and uh, gives you a couple quick moves, make picks up a few, a few extra yards. That's a 23 yard gain. Here's the first and 10. Here's the fullback, Stan Edwards. Uh, he makes a, a run, gain 15 yards. Here's a third and five on the Minnesota 12. Again, uh, Woolfolk uh, gets stopped for a two yard loss by, uh, by Kellen there, and uh, they had to settle for the field goal, so they go up uh, three nothing at that point. Again, in the first quarter, we get back to punt, and we get a roughing the punter on uh, Paul Blanchard. That gave us a 15 yard penalty and a first down. Now you'll see us. Uh, on our next uh, possession, we're third and three right here. Here's Hohensee back to pass. Throws the ball out to Frank Jacobs. Franks makes the catch, picks up uh, 11 yards. Here's the second and five. Hohensee back to pass again. Hits Cooper on a, on a quick pass for nine yards. Second and two. See Frank Jacobs, our tailback, on a sweep. And uh, second and two, we ended up with a three yard loss, and therefore we had to settle for a field goal here. Uh, it was a little far out with the wind going. Jim had kicked one from there before the ball game, so we thought we'd give it a shot, but it didn't work then. First and 10, Smith back to pass again. Finds Carter again. He goes out of bounds after a 20-yard gain. Here's a first and 10, Smith back to throw. Again, hits Carter again, and he shakes off for Glenn Cardell. He goes down the sideline and picks up 28 yards. And on a second and three from the Minnesota 10, here's Smith hits Stan Edwards out in the flat on us. And uh, he goes in for the touchdown with uh, with a 10-yard score. So they're up 10-0 at this time. Here's Hohensee back to uh, pass. He hits Jacobs, and he picks up six yards. Here's a second and one. Bob Stoop goes up through the middle. As you see his rough going there, although he did pick up four yards. First and 10. Hohensee back to pass again. Hits Cooper this time. This is a nine-yard game. Second and one. Well, we fumbled the snap in that situation, but we were able to get a first down. We've got a third and 10 coming up. Hohensee again sprinting out. He throws down the field, and he hits uh, Cooper, but it's a penalty for pass interference, and so we get a first down out of that one. Second and 10. Hohensee back to pass again, this time hitting Weckbacher, and he picks up 13 yards. Here's another second and 10. Again, you're going to see Hohensee sprinting out. So it's for Jay Carroll down here. We get another pass interference when he got tangled up on going for the football. We got a first down on the 15-yard uh, line here, and on uh, third down and four, you see Mike Hohensee roll out on an optional on a pass. We get everybody covered, and he ends up going to the end zone and gets us a touchdown and makes the score 10-7 at that point. So we're back in the game, and uh, we still got a uh, good chance to do things. Here's Manny Henry on the draw. This picks up 22 yards. Manny had about 60 yards rushing for us. Here's a first and 10. Here's Mike Hohensee back to pass again. He gets outside of Lamarati there in, throws the ball for Jay Carroll, and Jay uh, makes the catch. That's a 17 yard gain. Here Mike is back to pass to throw on a play action pass. He throws out to Weckbacher, and, and uh, Bostic, their safety man, comes over and intercepts, and that was the uh, key play for them because the game field position. Here's Smith back to pass again. He hits Bean. That was a third and 18. He hit Bean for 19 yeah. yards and gave him a first. So they were doing things right all afternoon. Here's a second and 14. This again is Smith turning the corner on us. And uh, he runs a 4-5 and he picked up a 32-yard gain right there. Fumbled but the ball went out of bounds. So they, re they kept possession of it. First and 10. Smith again complete to Carter. And uh, Took that little one yard pass, made 11 yard gain out of it. Again, another first and 10. Here's Smith pitching out to Woolfolk. He gets cut, uh, cuts by Mike Robb, and uh, he picked up eight yards. First and goal in the Minnesota one. And he'll hit Edwards again, the flat, the same one they hit the first touchdown on. And so they scored that with about a minute and uh, 17 seconds to go in the half. And, you know, those kind of hurt. That's three years in a row they've scored in about the last minute on us. Uh, <laughs> Right the half, and it's always been one that, that's really hurt. We've been there in a decent, having a decent game with them, and then all of a sudden that always happens to you. But uh, they, they executed well and did a good job. It would have been nice to go in 10-7, but you're still not out of it 17-7, really. 
Well, not really. We felt we had to do something when we got the ball. We came back the first half and, and uh, we held them. We had them on the third and eight and we felt they, they were going to mm -hmm. punt in the win. We would have had field position and we got a pass interference call on Jim Fonhorst. And when that happened, uh, they eventually took that down and, uh, and turned it into a score. But, uh, well, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, I think that's coming up, Joe, in, the, in these uh, second half highlights, which I guess we can look at now. And uh, of course, they got the added advantage of getting the ball back on the kickoff. On the kickoff here again, Smith back. He throws to Edwards out here in the flat, and there's a third and eight. We got that pass interference on, Fon on Jim Fonhurst. Gives him a first and ten. Here again is uh, Edwards up the middle. He carried the ball more today than he had. He fumbled, but uh, Carter recovered. And our kids all thought we had the football there for a little bit, but we didn't. Here's a second and two. Wolf we'll walk around in. Of course, this guy here who was sixth in the NCAA 220-yard dashes last spring, so he's got great speed. Here's a second and 12, and here's Smith back to pass. Throws down the field, and he hits uh, Vince Bean right on the money. Fourth down and five uh, from the Minnesota 16-yard line, and uh, Ali Haji Sheik, whatever his name is, uh, uh, kicked a field goal, made it 22-7. Here's Honsey back to throw, throws out to Frank Jacobs. And Frank picks up a nine yards. Gets us in the second and one situation. Now we got the first down, and then first and ten again. You see Hohensee back to pass. He gets under a rush. He comes out of the pocket. They missed the tackle. And uh, he makes a fine run. Picks up 26 yards on this play. Okay, here's uh, Mike back to pass again. He decides to keep it again. This is a 24-yard gain, so he's picked up 50 yards in the last uh, couple of shots. Here's a second and two on the uh, about the 15-yard line. It was a long two yards, and, and uh, we went for the field goal, and, and Jim Gallery missed the thing. That could have made it 20 to 10, and it ended up being a key play in the game, I think, for us. And uh, uh, but he missed it this week instead of last. It wasn't like last week, and uh, they got the ball back. And here's Wolf Folk uh, running running through our line and secondary and everything else. He picked up 31 yards in that play. Here's a third and four. There's a long pass and again a great catch by Carter in the end zone. 25 yard touchdown pass. And that uh, made it 27 to 7. That pretty much put the uh, frosty on the cake. Here's Honsey back to pass. He hits uh, Weckbacher. That's a gain of 15 yards. Here's a third and six. Honsey back to pass. Hits Bob Stroop again going up the middle. Bob picks up 22 yards. Here's a first and 10. Honsey back to pass again. He gets rushed heavily on a blitz. He throws for Davidson. And the ball got tipped and we caught it. And uh, that was our one break of the afternoon, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that gave us a touchdown. And uh, Jim Gallery came up and missed the point, which made the score now 27-13. Here again, Smith uh, giving the ball off to Ricks. who makes eight yards. Here's a first and 20. And Smith is back to pass, and he throws down the middle to Carter. He just took it away from Glenn Cardelli there. Made 29 yards on that. Second and six. Here's Smith on the option. That gains seven. Now second and one. Ricks will go in for the score. Gets up over the top and uh, made the final score 34 to 13. Well, that's about enough of that. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen enough. They made believers out of me in the afternoon. I didn't have to worry about watching it the next day to find out about it. But they really have a fine football team. I think uh, uh, I could see why they were picked as the nation's number one team at the start of the year. And, they, and if they put, do put it together, the next four ball games they are going to be tough to beat. Mike Honsey does a pretty good job running. Well, he's, he's uh, really uh, more of a quick player than he is uh, just straight out, uh, straight ahead speed. But uh, he does have good quickness, and he's able to make some quick moves and get by some tacklers. And, uh, and he's got good enough speed that he can't get down the field. But he, he had a good day. He threw for, uh, he was 22 for 40, threw for uh, 213 yards, rushed for mm -hmm. uh, about 70 yards. So he had, out of our total offense of, of 396, he had close to 300 yards himself there. I imagine film analysis will give you a better idea of the <coughs> an answer to this question, but is there a, were they doing something special that didn't allow you to run? Well, not really. I, uh, I felt that uh, we could run going in the ball game, and there wasn't anything we hadn't practiced against. It wasn't anything new. They just lined up and came across the line of scrimmage, and uh, I think they defeated us up front and handled the line of scrimmage and uh, was able to dominate it, so to speak. And we didn't really have any cracks or any big holes to run mm -hmm. through and try to get through. And so with that, most of our gains end up being one and two yards. And we would try to run the first down, but we were coming up like second and nine and second and eight. And uh, 
which made it tough. So then pretty soon we went to play action passes on first down, trying to open things up, but it didn't really help much. <laughs> well, Joe, somebody says commercial, so <laughs> we'll sell something and be back to hear from the players right after this. The tax break you've been waiting for is here. Hi, I'm Peter Graves for Midwest Federal. Introducing the insured All Savers Certificate. Now you can really make money saving because your interest is exempt from federal income tax, up to $2,000 if you file jointly. And depending on your federal tax bracket, this means you can get a higher yield than from other investments. The All Savers Certificate, a one-time opportunity. Don't miss it at Midwest Federal. Way out in the forest where the cool mountain air plays tag through the trees with the deer and the bear, you'll find a strange critter at work on the land. He's known far and wide as the woodcutting man. Husqvarna chainsaws are tough performers, cut through the big jobs with less noise, less vibration, less weight, less effort, and a lot more safety and dependability. Husqvarna, the chainsaw professional. To $60 rebate available at these participating dealers. Here's a toss-up for 10 points. Where is Mariner High School located? Hanson. White Bear Lake, Minnesota. That's correct. Here's another 10-point toss-up. Where is Norwood Central High School located? Campbell. West of Cologne. That also is correct. And those are the two teams that will be right here on the High School Bowl on the kickoff game of the season. It'll be Sunday morning at 12.30, and I hope you'll be here, too. This week on Solid Gold, star Andy Gibb and co-host Marilyn McCool welcome special guest Ann Murray. It's a solid hour of gold with air supply and their smash hit, Here I Am. Don McLean sings about castles in the air. The Greg Kim Band with a girl most likely, plus Stevie Woods and Steel the Night. Danny and the Junior's Solid Gold Classic at the Hop. And a special appearance by rock songstress Pat Benatar with Promises in the Dark. This hour is always special. It's Solid Gold. Sunday afternoon at 4. Well, I think it's fair to say it was not an up locker room following yesterday's loss to Michigan, but there were plenty of players who were still uh, gracious enough to talk to us about it, and here's what they had to say. Yeah, Anthony Carter is probably the best receiver that I've faced since I've played college football, and uh, I really hope that I don't really face anybody better until I go out, but uh, he's got all the tools. Was there any special plan for him today? There didn't seem to be. No, we tried to kind of do the same thing that we did to Wayne, to Wayne Gunn against Indiana. But uh, this, this time, Carter just came out ahead, you know. They, you know, plays a decoy, and they go to him a lot. But they, he's probably better off when they go to him more than playing a decoy. There really is a psychological attitude, huh, playing against Michigan. There is a psychological attitude. and Because, uh, you know, you look at the offense formation, they got, they got all these All-Americans, all these, you know, top-notch players. And uh, all of a sudden, you think they, they make a big play, and you start thinking, you know, are they ever going to stop? Glenn, what about next week? Uh, you're looking at Ohio State, another tough team, but uh, knowing the character of this team, I guess they'll be ready. Yeah, you know, Coach Sh uh, Salem will probably get us really ready this week, and Coach Vanish will do the same thing. But uh, here we are facing the best quarterback probably in the Big Ten, Arch Schleister. Here's another challenge we got in the secondary. It seems like every week, you know, we got a bigger challenge. You don't mind challenges, do you? No, I don't mind them at all, just as long as we come out ahead. The way we felt today, earlier today, they were, they were just like any other team. We just came out to play him. We was gonna give him a good game. Like we said before, the breaks just fell more more breaks just went their way. Next week, of course, another big challenge, particularly in a running quarterback who can also throw an arch leaster and some other things. Yeah. We it'd be a nice one, but I think we'll be ready for the impact. Matter of fact, I know we'll be ready. I don't know. We had a good week of practice and I felt I I honestly came into this game thinking we were gonna win this game. But for some reason today we didn't get the breaks. We had a, I thought a few bad calls by the referees really hurt. Like the beginning of the second half when Farnworth got called for a pass. I thought that was a key point. And um, we just couldn't come up with a big play today, and that really hurt. How about Ohio State? Well, I haven't seen no film on Ohio State at all, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta win this one. Everything they ran against us, we uh, seen uh, early in the game. We had had to adjust. I think after the first two series. They, they ran a, a little different front at us than, than they had in the past few games they played. So uh, other than that, I think uh, we knew what they were knew what they were running, and it was just a matter of us coming out and executing against it and uh, making the big play when we had to. 
How about next week, Dale? You've got another frying pan fire situation. Oh, yeah, it's a big one next week. We play Ohio State, and we got them here at home. So uh, I think the best thing now after this loss is that we have three more games to be able to come out and prove that we are a good football team. And, and the way the Big Ten's going right now, it's it's a total dogfight, and who knows what's going to happen by the end of these these three weeks and the outcome of it. So, uh, you know, we we just have to come out and execute and play from here on out our last three games because uh, I personally I think we're right in the thick of it still, and and we are de a definite bowl contender. Uh, depends how we do in these next three games. So we'll just have to go to work tomorrow and come out for Ohio State. Well, the Michigan game is history, and we want to talk to you about a little history if we can for a moment. There's a new publication which should be of interest to any Gopher fan, really. It's titled 100 Years of Gopher Football. It was published now because this marks the first century of football at Minnesota. Tom Barron, the University of Minnesota Williams Fund director, and athletic director Paul Giel were in on this project, and this will explain what it's all about. Even the artwork on the cover and inside by G.R. Cheeseboro makes 100 years of Golden Gopher football an attractive publication. And inside, some things to reminisce about, like the little brown jug, the 49ers, seats in the aisles, the voice of Memorial Stadium. There are recollections from and of the famous, and some things you may never have heard about, like the Missoula fire. We talked with athletic director Paul Giel about the concept of the book. We felt we had an obligation to all the Gopher fans that uh, are long since gone and those that are here and those that are coming along that this is a hundred years of Golden Gopher football. This is the anniversary and we should do something and we should do it right. And uh, I would never want to leave here as an athletic director saying you just kind of sloughed it off during the season, did something in your game programs. There should be a special edition. And between Tom and Ralph Turton, who put this together, along with a lot of help from a lot of people in the news media that had a lot of nostalgia in them they wanted to write about, we've come up with a $5, well worth it, 100th uh, anniversary book. Proceeds from the $5 sales will be contributed to the Williams Fund. If it were not for the Williams Fund, donations of this type uh, from our golf outings or just somebody sending us a check, there is no way we would be able to keep an 11 sport program going. Most of the dollars are going into our non-revenue sports like golf and gymnastics and so forth and to make us able to uh, operate and, and balance the budget. 100 years of Golden Gopher football is widely available. It's available right here at the Beerman Building. It'll be available uh, during the Michigan game, during the Ohio State game, during the Wisconsin game. I've got a list here. I'll just run down it quickly at all B. Dalton stores, Dayton stores, Donaldson's, Powers, the University Bookstore right here on campus. But I'm, I'm just, you know, really proud of it because uh, it's done so well and uh, not just thrown together. And they've picked out 20 of the so-called best games in the history of the University of Minnesota. And I might add, I'm very proud that the 1953 Michigan game is in there when, when, when I played and was so proud to walk off the field with a 22 to nothing victory. But, uh, it, you know, you could use it for groups. Uh, corporations could use it for presents. You could use it uh, as an individual present for a, a friend of yours that you know is steeped in the tradition of the Golden Gophers. And it's nice, easy reading. And uh, uh, we had a Gold Glory book a few years ago that was yeah. very good. And this is every bit as good. I really like the book, Joe, and I think people will be interested to know, if you, if you didn't catch it on the tape, that it'll be available at the Ohio State game at the stadium next week and at the Wisconsin game when we play the last home game of the year, and it's really worth it. We'll be back to look at Ohio State right after this. The following is a paid political announcement. We have learned in Santa Monica that a lot of people are hurt by rent control. It is an extremely cumbersome system to administer and it costs a lot of money, and I don't think the net benefit is there for the tenant. Rent control hurts the tenants. The tenants end up paying for rent controls, and tenants on fixed incomes now get annual rent increases when before they never used to do that, and they're really being hurt by rent control. Vote no on rent control. Vote no on Charter Amendment 89. 
This fall, you'll notice an addition to the Country Day family. His name is Roger Strom, and the information he offers could make the margin of difference for Midwestern farmers and ranchers. As a farm director, Roger has spent six years covering agricultural news, analyzing the markets, and developing contacts in agribusiness. Roger is a voting member of the National Association of Farm Broadcasters, and he will begin each Country Day with Ag Report, a daily look at agricultural news and marketing. If you miss Ag Report and Roger Strom, you may have missed too much. Every day, over 100 people on the Eyewitness News team gather and prepare the news that affects you. When it comes down to news time, they depend on their team up front to deliver a complete and comprehensive report of the day's news. The kind of report you expect when you tune in to Eyewitness News. Stan Turner, whose experience as a news director, reporter, and anchor gives you the advantage of hearing the news from someone who understands it from every angle. Stan Turner and Cindy Bucato, part of the Eyewitness News team, up front. It's a colossal afternoon of excitement and music as the University of Minnesota Marching Band presents their 20th annual indoor concert at Northrop Auditorium. Come enjoy the color and enthusiasm of this renowned marching band as they play a season of music, show tunes, and traditional university marches indoors. Performances are Sundays, November 8th, 15th, and 22nd, 3 p.m. in Northrop Auditorium. Bring the family. Tickets available at all Dayton's or Northrop. Call now. It's an afternoon you'll long remember. Well, Joe, as I mentioned to uh, Kenny Delafiore, it's kind of out of the frying pan into the fire in terms of these two teams. It's Ohio State coming up and a uh, tremendous game with Purdue yesterday. 800 and some yards in the air and all that kind of thing. It was wild. <laughs> was, uh, the Big Ten's crazy. I think Purdue threw for 516 yards and rushed for 37 against yeah. them. So you don't know what you can do against any team. This yes. Cedric Adams uh, or uh, Anderson had a heck of a day, and I guess uh, in looking him up, he did practically nothing last year because he was a sophomore. It's Arch least on an option that runs for a touchdown. I think he showed you right there. I really think Art's the, the kind of guy that can, can beat you in any way you, uh, possible. The guy is really a winner. And here's a long pass again to Cedric Anders Anderson for another touchdown. Uh, but Art, of course, brings with him a tremendous fire, and uh, uh, he's just a great quarterback. He this play has got it defender in his face and he lets this thing fly this is Anderson again but this was a third and nine and kept him in the game oh, yeah. you gotta see that great catch. <laughs> <laughs> well done huh begins there it's on a bootleg going over the middle yeah and he hits it. John Frank down the middle 29 yard touchdown against Purdue I guess the remarkable thing and they're celebrating of course because they they really got themselves out of this situation and this was really something because Campbell set a school record 516 yards passing to guys like Brian. It was uh, a whale of a game, but it looks like <clears throat> nothing seems to bother Ohio State. You know, they can uh, have that stuff thrown at them all day and still come out a winner. So. Well, they've been a team that uh, people have, uh, you know, they weren't really thought of much. Everybody thought Michigan was going to be the team to beat, and, uh, and so they kind of they were sitting in the background a little bit. Right now, they're number one in the Big Ten. They're four and one yeah. in first place, and uh, they got three games to go. So they're the odds on favor right now at this point to go to the Rose Bowl. So it should be an exciting game, and uh, something we'll look forward to next week, and along with the Joe Salem Show, of course, on Sunday here on Channel Five. This has been the Joe Salem Show with Minnesota Golden Gopher head coach Joe Salem and KSTP sportscaster Ed Cairo. The Joe Salem Show has been brought to you by Midwest Federal, a good tree to come to for shelter, providing financial services to this area for 90 solid years. This has been a pre-recorded presentation of KSTP. This is Ashlands, America, Charlotte, North Carolina, where the opera company is for young people, too. Cooper Alexander III of Ashland's Intagon Life Insurance Corporation has helped to make the North Carolina Opera a major attraction throughout the South. I was nearly 40 before I discovered the magic of opera, so I'm excited that we're reaching over 50,000 school children who might never have experienced that magic. Ashland's America, where Ashland people do a good job and a little more. Next on Entertainment Tonight, get a slice of life. Hey, what pressure that lasts one long party. From super rock star Tom Petty. Then we've got an exclusive that's rated a 10 when temptress Bo Derek reveals her inner secrets. I mean, we can't walk around thinking we've been doomed because somebody bit an apple. From the rockers to the wooers. If they're the hottest names in entertainment, you'll find them right here on Entertainment Tonight. Monday night at 6.30.
I'm Scott Baio, and they're not. Join me on We're Moving, where you'll see that huggable hero who'll steal your heart while he steals the scene, Benji. You'll see some Harley riding stuntmen for whom death defying jumps are all in a day's work, and grab a backstage pass to that ever popular group, the Commodores. They've been topping the charts for years. See you on the next We're Moving. Sundays at 1. Okay. This family practices their escape routes regularly, and they bought and installed smoke detectors. This family took the time to be prepared. Protect your family. Install at least one smoke detector and practice fire drills. It could save your life. The Eyewitness Advantage on Channel 5, St. Paul, Minneapolis. In 1980, a big year for the North Stars. We expect a great year for the Olympic team, a great, great year for all the college and Maha teams, and we're looking forward to having a lot of fun. And we're going to be with you every weekend all the way through the winter season. And one of our new things this year is going to, bring, to be to bring members of our staff on camera so you get to know them, and they'll, they'll maybe introduce the uh, panel for you, and we'll go from there. So today, let's meet Lori Patton, who will be with us all year long, selling advertising and learning a part of our business. And Lori, who did you bring along today to put on our panel? Well, Bob, I'd just like to tell you I'm glad to be here. From the North Stars today, we have Coach Glenn Sumnar and player Jack Carlson. And from the Olympic team, we have United States Olympic team, we have Herb Brooks and player Neil Broughton. I want to tell you something. You brought good-looking guys along, Lori, to match her own looks. That's neat, huh? Yeah. we got to take a break for these messages, and then we're going to be right back and talk a lot of hockey. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. 